Hello, my name is Carlos Urban, and this is part two of a macro tutorial video where we're going to show a very simple technique to take very good macro shots. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the video of how we actually took the shot. So this is a demonstration on how to take a macro shot. So what I did here, because I'm doing this at night, is that I, I put a light here, okay, a reflector light, just to uh, make it easier. Uh, we're using a strawberry, okay? Now, here is my D800, but it's the same for almost every camera. The technique is gonna be the same. I also decided to put my speed light so I could show you how to take the picture with a speed light as well because sometimes you need the speed light for additional light. So so we're going to take the picture probably three ways. One with a reflector light, one with a speed light, and we'll try one without neither of them. Okay, the most important thing, and we talked a little bit about this in the previous video, is the settings. So you see how... A means manual autofocus. So what that means is that I I can focus. So let me show you. So I'm gonna focus. Let me take it away from live view. So I'm gonna focus. So why is it not focusing? What the reason why it's not focusing? That's why I want to show you the demonstration. Is because Right now, the setting is on uh, manual autofocus, and when it's so close, it's very hard to focus. So that's why we have to do manual focus. The other thing we want to make sure is that it's on full. Full is whenever it's less than half a meter. Half a meter is 18 inches, okay? And I just turned the VR off because right now uh, we're using a tripod and since we're using a tripod we really don't want to have vibration reduction because what it actually does when you put it on a tripod is that it vibrates <laughs> so believe it or not so the technique to take a macro shot like this one is as follows you're going to use the live view okay now the live view it's something that you typically don't use with this type of camera. It's something that you would do with a digital camera. I mean, um, with a point and shoot. But in this particular case, it's very useful. Why is it useful? The reason why it's useful, and I'm gonna pretend that it was completely out of focus. The reason why it's useful is because if you're looking through the viewfinder, it's very difficult to see when it's perfectly on focus. Here, it's actually very easy because all you have to do is to magnify it okay so you magnify it maybe you don't have to go so much and then when you magnify it then you're going to turn this little wheel which is the manual focus in case you're not used to using manual focus and we just start turning it in until it's perfectly on focus you see how easy it is now it's perfectly in focus now one of the things is we want to get proper exposure so now we're gonna unzoom it so that we can take the shot so you see it's at f16 and one tenth of a second one tenth of a second may not be enough what I'm gonna go and do now even though you can actually see your exposure here in the live view I'm actually going to go away from the live view. I think it's a, a better habit is when you uh, when you use your camera the way you usually do. Now I have another video where I show how to project it in the screen. So here is projected on the screen. We can see right here. So I'm on on manual, right? And you can see right here that is if I go, this should be the proper exposure now. Uh, again, I don't want this to be <laughs> a class on, on, on metering and exposure. 
I do have it on matrix metering. Matrix metering is not necessarily going to be the best for this because we are on, we only care about the we only care about the the strawberry. So it should be. I'm going to put it on center weighted. Okay. I don't like so much the spot metering, so I'm just going to use the center weighted. With the center weighted. I'm going to expose a little bit to the right, will that uh, to the right because it's a tiny bit overexposed. Okay, so let's go. It's already focused. We already did the focus on live view, so we don't need to do it again. It's already in focus, so we can go away from live view. Now, I'm going to take the shot, but when you take the shot, you should use a cable release. If you don't have a cable release, something that you may want to do is just put the timer, okay? The timer will eliminate, you know, it will, see, so now it's going to shoot by itself, because if I push the button, it's going to move it. So, okay, so here is the picture. So let's do a little bit of analysis of this picture. First of all, I like the exposure. With the histogram, you can see that it goes all the way from the left to the right. And so that means that it's good exposure. So now, let's see if it's sharp and in focus. Yes, it is. So that's good. So, um, you know, we are at the six minute mark. I'm not gonna do the cigar. Uh, I do wanna do the flash though. So I'm gonna turn on the flash. I'm going to turn off the light. So let's try now with flash. Take it away from the live view. Okay. It's no, it's, it's uh, because it's dark. Okay. Even though I'm going to have flash, I'm going to need a little help because I, my flash is not going to do everything. So let's try it with flash. Okay, so this is with flash. I don't like very much the way it came out. I think it has to do with the white balance. So these are the pictures that we took. Uh, this is right out of the camera. This is the one that we took with uh, with the reflector light okay so first of all I always start with cropping okay so in this particular case um, you know if I want to crop it a little bit more actually this um, this picture I already have started cropping so let me take it to the way it, this is the way it was before so with your cropping tool by that you can put it custom or one-to-one -one. in this case i think it looks nice uh, you know like a square composition again here we're doing very basic editing just to show what's important for macros what's important for macros is is that you can get a lot of the detail in order to get the detail first you need to be properly exposed okay so in this particular case um, let's go to the exposure so this is the way it was I'm gonna go a little bit more light it was not my best work in lighting <laughs> I mean I could have done a better job of lighting this side but uh, we'll leave that for another video What's important is also the clarity. You see, you can crank it all up, but when you crank it all up, it, it looks completely unrealistic. So like everything, don't, don't overdo it, okay? You can play also a little bit with the vibrance, maybe with a little saturation. Anyway, so this is just the basics of, um, uh, of, this, of this shot. This is the way it would look. Uh, now, the one that we took with flash, 
So this is the one that we took with flash. Yeah, this is way underexposed. So the beauty of, of um, and why did that happen? The reason why that happened is because the, the flash, the metering was not responding to the flash the proper way. Uh, the beauty of, of the Nikon uh, is that you can go even one stop and recover a lot of what you lost. So you go over there, you can crop it a little bit more. Let's do this one uh, a little different than the other one. Okay. And uh, clarity. Very important, the clarity. The, the shadows. And open up the shadows. Okay. Okay, so again, this is not a Lightroom course. I have many videos on that. This is just to show, yeah, it looks nice actually, to show uh, the technique on how to take this particular picture and the basic processing. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pause it for a second because I wanna show you some pictures from my website that have been taken with this particular lens and talk a little bit about the settings that I use. So as I, as I talked in the previous video, this is my most famous shot. Uh, I show you a little bit of the settings on that. Uh, I believe it was f11, uh, but uh, I wanted to show you some other shots that you did not see in the previous video. So in this particular shot, okay, it was taken with a D7000, so that's a crop sensor. So the 105 actually becomes 157 millimeter, okay. It was f3, 1 to 100th of a second. So f3, what's the problem with f3? We talked about it. f3 will allow you to blur the background, which is very good. But on the other hand, you may have problems uh, not having everything in focus. Like this is not in focus. Uh, and if you look at it closely, probably some other things are not in focus. Uh, so let's see now oh, here is another example here is another example where you see this is not in focus and the reason is because i use 3.2 okay so a lot of these pictures actually were when i was beginning to take macro photography and uh, i went to actually it was a workshop and she didn't explain to us the, the aperture. So that's why I'm explaining it to you so that you don't make the same mistakes I made. Here, in this case, let's see, this is a little better. Yeah, you see F10. Look how beautiful everything is in focus. So the key here is the aperture, okay? The aperture is very, very important because of the depth of field. Let me show a little more example. So, you know, I don't do a lot of flowers, but uh, here is an example, F11. This, this one I use flash and it worked really, really nicely because I did want this dark. Uh, you know, I was trying to highlight the flower and not this uh, pond, which wasn't very nice. The beauty of... Um, of macro sometimes you see things that you wouldn't normally see uh, with a naked eye okay so this picture so here is something interesting that I want to show you the 105 the Nikro 105 uh, millimeter you can actually add the 1.7 teleconverter or the 1.4 teleconverter which doesn't work in most lenses it works only on the professional lenses and it, it, I was surprised that it worked on this. A lot of people don't know that. So all of a sudden, my 180 millimeters, because I'm using a 1.5 crop sensor, became 270 millimeters. This was very useful for me because this spider was all the way in the corner on, the, on a very high roof. So that helped me a lot. 
So uh, F16, which is perfect. That's what I wanted to use. I use my flash. Uh, so this is I, this is a, the type of shot that I that I recommend. Uh, this is the dragonfly. Same technique. Uh, let me see what else we have here. There is a lot of blur here, so I wouldn't be 7.1. Now the blur may look nice, but you know, this is not perfectly in focus. So unless you don't want it to be perfectly in focus, then then that's fine. Okay, so here's the shot that I was looking for. This is one of my favorite shots. And that one is F14. It is, the lighting is beautiful. Uh, you have here a drop of water. I mean, this is this is one of my favorite shots. So uh, let me pause it. I want to take a couple more minutes to show you um, portraits and other things that can be done with this lens. So here is another example of you know things that you can find in your house to practice. This these were some of my first shots uh, to try macro f11. You know always start at f11. Very sharp. Uh, I did uh, my father's watch, uh, he passed away, he had it for over 50 years, so this was an important picture for me. Uh, I took it F11, uh, but you see even at F11, look this is out of focus, so if I were to take this picture again, which I probably will, I would definitely uh, try the F16. So let me pause one more time. So I'm going to end this segment showing you with this lens how beautiful you can take uh, macro uh, shots. I mean, this is this is a uh, look how sharp it is. It's it's a wonderful shot. Uh, it's also very sharp, blurs the background. So obviously these were not taken with f16. These were taken with, uh, let's see if I have the information here, maybe 2.8, I don't know, it doesn't show the information for this one. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was either 2.8 or 3.5, because again, we're trying to blur the background. I also wanna show the level of detail that you can get. So this is a perfect example of the, the amount of detail that you can get, you see, this is, uh, look at the texture so i mean it's very difficult to get that without a macro lens so this is wonderful i mean that's why i love this lens it's so versatile you can use it not only for macros you can use it for portraits so i hope you enjoyed this video you found it useful if you have any question or comments please i welcome the comments and if there is a lot of questions, we may do another video to answer uh, those questions. Thank you very much, and uh, I hope you find it useful. Bye.